Welcome back to the Jerusalem Science Contest. This is the eighth week and we're going to be uh, discussing today nuclear fission and nuclear fusion. We're going to start out with a process known as spontaneous fission. There are certain uh, uh, radionuclides that will actually, uh, actually there's only one naturally occurring one which is uranium-238 uh, uh, which undergo uh, spontaneous fission but some of the higher um, uh, isotopes uh, the, of, of the transuranium elements also will undergo uh, what is known as spontaneous fission. So in a spontaneous fission reaction, uh, what we have is something that looks like this. So we're going to start out with a nuclide. Um, and uh, whatever that nuclide happens to be, it's going to split into two fragments. And this, as I say, is going to happen spontaneously. So we can designate these fragments L and M, and we're going to say that uh, L is going to be, so this will be uh, A1, uh, Z1, and this is going to be uh, A2 and Z2, and then this is also going to produce uh, a, uh, and it will depend on uh, specifically on what uh, particular uh, isotopes we happen to be talking about, but it will also produce a certain number uh, and we use nu to designate that number of neutrons. And that number is generally uh, somewhere between one and four neutrons. Okay, um, so this uh, generally describes uh, what, we, what we would call spontaneous uh, fission reactions. And we can also calculate uh, from these reactions, much as we actually calculated the uh, Coulombic barrier in the uh, preceding uh, uh, chapter, we can actually calculate a, um, uh, the total kinetic energy uh, that is actually involved in this uh, fission uh, process. And it it's going to look very much like the, uh, the formula that we use for finding a Coulomb barrier. But in this particular case, uh, uh, what it's going to be is uh, we're in the uh, case of the uh, Coulomb barrier, we used a coefficient of 1.11. Now we're going to use the coefficient of 0.80. So if we take 0.80, so the total energy, uh, the total kinetic energy uh, uh, from this reaction will be equal to uh, 0.80 times the, uh, the Z numbers, that is the proton numbers of these uh, two fragments here. So it's going to be Z1 times Z2. And this is very much like when we were doing uh, the fission before. We had the projectile as one of these mass, as, as one of these numbers, and we had the uh, 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 the nuclide that was undergoing uh, 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 capture, for instance, neutron capture, as the other one. So here it's the two fragments that we're looking at. So it's the product of those two divided by. Uh, it's also in parentheses divided by uh, the cube roots of again of uh, A, A1 and A2, the sum of those two. So that actually is going to give us uh, the total uh, kinetic uh, energy uh, for, for these reactions. Now, what we can do is we can also calculate that in another way, and we can find that uh, we can actually get another uh, uh, way that we have of actually calculating uh, K sub T. That's actually a subscript. Another way that we can calculate K sub T is we can say that K sub T is the sum of each one of these individually. And if we look at them individually, uh, we can say that we've got a, a K1 and a K2. So we can actually look at the kinetic energy of this fra fragment and the kinetic energy of this fragment. So the K sub T uh, is equal to the K sub 1 plus K sub 2 plus actually uh, the energy, uh, the kinetic energy of the uh, neutrons as well. So we could, we could factor that in as well as if we wanted to. But K sub 1 is going to be equal to um, the total kinetic energy. This is how we can actually um, divide these up. It's going to be equal to the kinetic, total kinetic energy plus the um, atomic mass 
of A sub 2 divided by uh, the atomic mass of A sub 1 plus A sub 2. So that would be for, uh, for the uh, first, first fragment. And for the second fragment, K sub 2, that's going to be the total kinetic energy, again, uh, times uh, A sub 1 divided by A sub 1 plus A sub 2. So again, if we take these two and add them together, we're going to get the uh, total kinetic energy uh, for these processes. And an example is given on page uh, 142 uh, for uh, the fission of uranium-238, uh, spontaneous fission. Spontaneous fission of uranium-238, it's a, it's a rare event. If we look at the, um, at the branch ratio for this uh, particular uh, event for spontaneous fission of that isotope, the percentage is very, very small. It's uh, something on the order of uh, 0 0.00005, which is 5 times 10 to the minus uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 5 times 10 to the minus 5 uh, percent. So it's uh, something that does happen with uranium-238, but spontaneous fission is a, real, is a, is a pretty rare event, but it, does, but it does occur, where it doesn't occur with any other uh, naturally occurring uh, isotopes. So we, we have uh, on page 142 uh, the reaction where uranium-238 is undergoing uh, spontaneous fission, and it's producing uh, uh, tellurium-134, plus, so this is uranium-238, and it's going to tellurium-134 uh, uh, plus zirconium, and zirconium is uh, 40 and 102. And 102, so if we add these up, we see that we're missing four neutrons, so we have to balance that, at, that out with four neutrons, uh, and that's N1. So that's the reaction that we're looking at. And uh, for that reaction, if we add up the mass of the reactant, which is, uh, two, which is given as 238.050783 atomic mass units, and then we add up the, uh, uh, the mass of all of the uh, products, that is the uh, tellurium, uh, the zirconium, and uh, finally uh, the two uh, the the net. Well, actually, there's four neutrons. Let's see here. So we got the. Uh, so why are we? Uh, let me see something here. I'm sorry, I made a mistake here. That's only two neutrons. So it must be uh, that one of my numbers is wrong on the top here. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry. This is one of. So, hmm, 34, um, yeah, there might be an error in the book here. I'm just trying to see why this doesn't balance out. 134, 136, it does balance out. My math is not very good. I apologize. This is actually only two neutrons. I just didn't add this correctly. Um, so that actually does give us the correct number. So if we actually look at all of these together, if we add up the uh, mass of the reactants and then we subtract out the mass of the products, uh, the uh, uh, technetium, it's the sum of the masses, the technetium, the zirconium, and the two neutrons, uh, we'll find out that the lost mass is 0 0.19893. So it's approximately 0 0.2 uh, atomic mass units. And then, of course, we can use our conversion factor of uh, 931.5 uh, uh, million electron volts per atomic mass units, and we'll find out that this gives us 185.3 uh, uh, MeVs as the, um, uh, this is equivalent to the, uh, to the loss mass. This is the energy equivalent to the loss mass. So we've, once we've got that number, then we can actually go back and look at, um, using the formulas that we had before, we can calculate uh, K sub T, which is 0 0.80 times the, um, the product of the uh, two atomic numbers, 52 and 40, divided by the uh, cube root of 134, which is the atomic uh, mass of, tech of, uh, 
of tellurium, and 102, which is the atomic mass of uh, zirconium. And when we do that, we arrive at an answer uh, for uh, uh, the total atomic mass as 170.0 uh, million electron volts, 170 MeVs. So this is K sub this is K sub T. And then if we do it individually uh, for each of the two um, nuclides, what we'll find is that for um, uh, the first one which is the, uh, the uh, zirconium, uh, we're going to get 73, so K for zirconium is going to be 73 MeVs, and K for tellurium is going to be uh, 97 MeVs. So if you add both of those up, you'll find out, of course, that they have to, uh, they have to sum to 170 MeVs, which they do. Uh, so there's a difference here between 170 and 185 of approximately uh, 15 MeVs, and that's uh, energy that's carried off in these uh, uh, the neutrons. So if we actually uh, add everything up, it does uh, pretty much balance out. So this is for spontaneous uh, fission. But uh, as I said, there's only this one uh, isotope that's, that's undergoing spontaneous fission. Uh, there are some of the higher isotopes uh, that also do it. Uh, the ones, uh, uh, transuranium elements out around like fermium, for instance, uh, fermium will uh, undergo spontaneous fission uh, quite readily. And there's one isotope of fermium, uh, I believe that the branch ratio is something like 92, um, 92%, so it's not a very, very low percentage. Most of those uh, atoms will actually undergo spontaneous fission. So, if we want to encourage fission, uh, we can do so by actually putting um, some energy into a nucleus because uh, the problem is that, that the reason that other uh, isotopes or other uh, nuclides don't do this is um, there's really not enough energy in the nucleus for that to occur. So we actually have to uh, induce fission and that's generally done using a, a, a neutron as a projectile. And we've already seen uh, that neutrons can be absorbed in some cases and give us, uh, if, we're, if we're using uh, thermal neutrons, they can give us um, uh, new radioisotopes. But in fact, we can also take, um, we can also start out with one nuclide and we can add a neutron to it and we can get a compound nucleus which will actually fission, and it will fission into uh, D, uh, uh, well, we can call it B. Your book calls it B, since we've already taken up uh, C. So it's B plus D, uh, plus, again, there's going to be new neutrons, new, the number of neutrons. And again, that'll be somewhere usually around zero to four uh, neutrons that are produced in that reaction. Let's look at a typical reaction. Uh, for this kind of thing. And we say that um, that those kinds of nuclides uh, that will actually absorb a neutron and undergo this kind of a process, uh, we refer to those nuclides as being fissile. The word is F-I-S-S-I-L-E. As opposed to uh, a, a more general term, which is fissionable. Uh, so we say that the, 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 the kinds of nuclides uh, that will actually uh, fission with thermal, um, when we're using thermal, uh, uh, thermal neutrons are uh, fissile uh, nuclides. But if we have to use, uh, if we have to, if we can't use thermal uh, neutrons and we have to use a, uh, um, a fast neutron, then those kinds of things would be what we would refer to as fissionable uh, nuclides. So we've got a fissile uh, nuclide in the case of uh, uranium. Uh, 235, and uh, so we've got uh, 92 uranium 235, and it's going to absorb a neutron. And we kind of looked at this reaction once before. The compound nucleus uh, that would be formed is uranium 236. Uh, I did this, uh, I believe, last week when I was talking about uh, how we get um, how we get uh, uh, plutonium. Uh, from uranium. Actually, I was using 238 as the example, but 236 works as well, um, except that, well, 
I'm sorry, that's not true. 236, normally uh, it, it doesn't decay in the same way because the 230, uh, when we use 236, uh, what's actually happening now is uh, when we use 238, we formed, uh, initially we formed a compound nucleus that was 239, and that one was able to decay. There is a difference here. That one was actually able to decay to um, Neptunium, 239 through beta emission, and then that decayed to uh, plutonium 239. This is 93, and that's 94, and that decayed to uh, plutonium 239. This is different because it doesn't undergo the, the, this, the, uh, the same series of decays to give us plutonium 237. Instead, uh, what, or, or plutonium 236, instead, what happens? is that uh, the compound nucleus here actually uh, fissions and we get two pieces out of it. Now there's a lot of different pieces that you can get. The ones that are actually shown in this particular uh, uh, instance are uh, rubidium and cesium. So uh, this fissions and we get rubidium. So that's rubidium 37 rubidium-94 plus uh, cesium, and that's cesium-140. And again, this is uh, 50, you have to forgive me because as I said, I'm, I'm working in very, very low light and my eyes are not very good. So it's hard for me to read these uh, little numbers. Um, and then again, we're gonna get two neutrons out of that. So two, zero, one, N. So that should total up to 92 here, it does, and 100 and, uh, well, we have two of these, so that's 2, uh, 96, 236. So the masses balance out on this. So we can do, as we've done before, uh, we can do some calculations with this, and what we find is that uh, if we actually do a, a, an N to Z calculation on the uranium-235, we're going to find out that it's n to n to z uh, ratio, uh, which is going to, which you know, is a it, it basically tells us that this is going to be uh, the n to z ratio is 1.55, and that's a pretty high ratio. It's it, it's basically indicating to us uh, that this is going to be uh, unstable. Uh, that's actually uh, uranium 235 here. But if you look at each of the products that form, you find out you really haven't done anything uh, to reduce their n to z ratios. Uh, significantly. So rubidium is 1.54 and cesium is 1.54. And because of that, uh, we know that those two um, daughter, uh, those two uh, 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 fission fragments are actually uh, going to produce uh, daughter elements. So they're actually going to uh, also undergo decay. And if we look at that, uh, we'll find out that rubidium uh, will actually decay to zirconium. Uh, through a series of three beta emissions. So it goes from rubidium uh, uh, 94 to strontium 94 to yttrium 94 and finally uh, zirconium uh, 94. So we can actually um, talk about fission yield, which is the percentage of each of those isotopes that would form during that, during that process. Uh, the problem is that some of these things are very short-lived. So rather than uh, talking about individual uh, fission yields, uh, which is kind of hard to do, uh, what we call an independent yield. So if we were to actually look at that reaction that I said before, starting out with rubidium, starting out with rubidium 94, and then this uh, undergoes uh, beta decay to strontium 94, and finally uh, to yttrium 94, followed by uh, zirconium-94, which is the stable uh, isotope. So looking at all of those, if we actually wanted to try to calculate uh, what the independent yields of any one of them are, since some of them have very short uh, half-lives, it's difficult to do that. So we usually talk about something called the cumulative yield. Uh, so we can determine the yield of all the isobars uh, together, because basically that's not, that, that the masses are not, not changing in this, so we can actually calculate how much mass we have in the end 
and that's going to give us the, uh, the actual uh, cumulative yield for that reaction. Uh, okay, so, um, and these are graphed, these yields are graphed, uh, let's see, in figure uh, 8.2, which is actually shown on page uh, 145. And this is kind of interesting, because what you find is for these reactions, This is actually looking at the. This is actually looking at the uh, fission products, uh, the fission product yields for thermal uh, neutron fission of, ur of uranium two thirty five. So we're not going to get uh, just, uh, for instance, uh, rubidium and cesium out of this uh, reaction. There's a number of other. It, there, there are a number. It, it's basically we can get anything that's actually going to total. It's going to have the same atomic mass as uh, the sum of uh, cesium and rubidium. So we can also uh, obtain uh, an element that's, uh, for instance, uh, uh, that's too higher than rubidium. Uh, that would give us, uh, let's see, what would that give us? I mean, you have to find a, have to find a periodic table here. So, for instance, uh, we, could, we, we could obtain yttrium as a primary fragment, and that means that uh, the, other, the other fragment uh, rather than being uh, cesium, would have to be two uh, lower than cesium, and that would be iodine. So we could get an yttrium iodine pair, and we could pair these up in a variety of different ways. So the uh, figure uh, 8.2, what it's trying to show us is uh, if we look at the uh, mass number of fragment and we plot it against uh, the uh, percent fission yield, uh, we're going to find uh, that we actually get something that's uh, that sort of looks a little bit like this. Uh, it's got uh, it's got two uh, maxima in it, and actually there's actually a little local maximum as well, about here, and then there's another one uh, over on the other side. There's a kind of a little spike on both ends of this, uh, and if we plot that, so we're down here uh, on the x-axis, we're plotting the uh, mass number. atomic mass, and uh, on the uh, y-axis we're, we're, we're plotting uh, percent fission yield. So this is percent fission yield over here. And what we find is um, that at this minimum here, that is where we get the lowest fission yield, is a process that's known as symmetric fission. Uh, that would be one where uh, the compound nucleus splits into two nuclei that are exactly the same size. And that's not a terribly favorable uh, process, uh, which is why the fission yield is uh, over here is pretty low. It's like 0.01%. Uh, percent. And uh, in, in this case, uh, for uranium-235, that would give us uh, palladium-118. Uh, so the reaction would be uh, uranium-235, uh, captures a neutron, goes to 2, palladium-118, uh, so 2 times 118 is uh, 236, that uh, gives us the uh, correct uh, mass number, and then this is cut in half, so that's got to be 46. Um, Again, uh, even though this is a stable uh, uh, nuclide, it's, a, uh, it's, it, it's an even, even uh, nuclide, it's not terribly favored. There are a lot of other processes that could happen. And uh, it turns out that we're going to find that, uh, or we've seen already, that uh, where we get, um, where we actually get products that contain magic numbers, uh, they're going to be much, much more favored uh, types of reactions. So if we have a magic number uh, like 82 or 50 of either uh, protons and or neutrons, that's going to tend to be the most favored kinds of things. So those things are really going to swamp out the uh, symmetrical uh, uh, fission and you're going to get a lot more of these asymmetric products. It turns out that the spikes are actually uh, uh, one of them, uh, which is actually over here, is at a is at a mass 
132, which corresponds to um, 10, an isotope of 10. And 10 is uh, 50. The atomic number is, uh, f uh, of 10 is 50. So that is a magic number. So there's 50 protons. Uh, that means that there's 82 neutrons. So this is actually doubly magic, uh, which is why th that's particularly favored. Uh, the one on the other side is actually, if you're going to form uh, 10, uh, 50, if you're going to form 1050, then the other part of this has to be, let's rewrite this again. So if you're going to, if you're starting out with uranium uh, 235 and you add a neutron to it, and then you go through the, uh, I'm not going to write the uranium 236, well, I might as well. There's your compound nucleus. And then that's going to go to, if it goes to 10, 50, 132, uh, and we're producing, uh, in this reaction, I believe it's uh, also two neutrons. Uh, that leaves us with uh, 102, uh, which is probably where the other spike is. Yes, I believe so. Uh, it looks like at 100. Maybe my math is not right here. Let's see. Now, it's going to be 40. It's certainly going to be 40. If this is 50, this is going to have to be 42 here. And... Uh, Let's see, what is element number 42? I believe it's molybdenum. That's molybdenum. Uh, I don't have this right now. I think, I think in your book it should tell you what the other one is, but I, it looks like it would be molybdenum. Um, I thought it was 100, 102. It might be 100. It looks like it looks from the graph. It looks like it's 100, but I think my uh, my math might be a little bit off again, or uh, possibly in that reaction maybe there are four neutrons, and that's why it is 100. But I just want to make sure that I've actually got uh, it is 100, and there are four neutrons. Okay, so I didn't see that. It's actually in the book uh, for this particular reaction. So there are four neutrons, and that's why that wasn't coming out. So this is molybdenum 100. So that's why you have the other, so that represents, this represents molybdenum uh, 100 over here, and the other one is the 10, uh, 132. And you have those spikes there. But all these other things are all the other combinations that you could possibly get. So these, uh, uh, this kind of tab table, uh, the fission product yield, uh, can be very, very useful uh, for determining uh, if you have that kind of a thing, you can actually determine uh, what uh, particular uh, pairs of nuclides are most likely to form from this, although there are going to be a great many of them that will actually will form. But you'll notice uh, that for these, uh, you're approaching about 10% fission yield, uh, opposed to this, which is only 0.01% for, uh, for the palladium. Uh, 